This example puts together some of the items that have been described in previous lessons. The main purpose here is to give you an idea of the structure of your JSP code and how that will map into the Java class that's produced from it. Here at the very top is a page directive with the import attribute. This will produce an import statement at the top of the generated object. Only one class is imported by this particular statement. Here is the declaration tag used to declare a method. Remember the declaration tag is used for any Java code that you want to include inside the class but outside of any method. We couldn't use this for the import statement because the import statements go outside of the class. Anyway, this is the declaration of a method that returns a string object. As you can see, it receives any string, repeats it 20 times, and surrounds it with center tags. The result is a centered dividing line that can be displayed on the page as a separator. Here is another use, and probably a more common use, of the declaration tag. The vector object created here is outside of any of the methods, so it will exist for the life of the object and will be available from any method in the object. Remember, you can put any code you want in here, just like with a scriptlet tag. The only difference is that the scriptlet code is added to the body of the method executed when the page is created, and the code in the declarative is placed outside of any method. This is HTML code generated through the print line method of the out object. The first statement outputs just a plain line of text. The second statement calls the make dividing line method and outputs the line of text it returns. It passes in a string of two asterisks, so the returned string is 20 asterisks surrounded by center tags. Here we are back in the HTML code again, and then an expression tag is used to execute the code and format the value returned from this method call. This is another call to the make dividing line method, but this time it's done with a couple of hyphens. This section of code uses the global vec the vector object. The first thing it does is add three string objects to the vector, then it calls a method named showVecElements. And here is the method showVecElements. This method definition is inside the declaration tag, and it shows a couple of things. First, the out object had to be passed to it, because the implicit out object exists only inside the method where the code normally executes so it would be unknown inside any other method. Also, this method is declared as throwing an exception because the print line method could throw an exception and Java requires that the IO exception either be caught or thrown to the caller. In this case it was thrown to the caller because code is already included there to catch it. The vector object can be used inside this method because it is a global object in the class and can be used by anyone. All this method does is extract each one of the members of the vector and write it to the output. You can see from this page that you need to have a good idea of what the tags do and where the code from each tag will go in the final class. And this is what the page looks like. One method produced the two dividing lines, and another method produced the list of words at the bottom. This is sort of a Baroque way to produce such a simple page, but you should be able to see some of the possibilities of using these techniques. One thing I'd like to mention here, this mixture of languages, HTML, Java, the tags of JSP, and the expression language, it all makes it possible to produce pages that are made up of a jumble of things and these become more and more difficult to maintain. Keep your design clear in mind and only use JSP where it truly has an advantage for you. Also, if you do very much with it, you'll find that the development cycle takes more time than normal. When you make a change to a JSP file, you have to create the new archive file to hold it and deploy it to the server before you can even test it.